Okay, let's see here. Okay, so I'm not quite sure how this is going to go because I've been having problems all afternoon trying to get the live stream to go out consistently and try to hook up hardwired and use this little thing from Best Buy and it doesn't work. So I'm back to Wi-Fi, so hopefully it works out pretty good. Now, uh, with that latency that I'm going to have, um, your, your guys' chats are going to probably come in a little staggered, uh, a little late. So um, I apologize if there's any uh, delay to everything. However, I want to make sure everything looks good for everybody. Uh, there's no issues. Audio is good. So let me know what you guys think. So you can you guys hear me okay? Okay, it looks like David says it looks sounds good, and Ron, you say everything looks good too. So um, we're gonna try to get pressed through here. I hope everybody's day has been going better than mine. I uh, set, started setting up this thing uh, this morning and lunchtime. It was all great. I come back down here to test a few more things and basically all hell broke loose. And I've been trying to fix it ever since. And it's just been one huge headache. So uh, I appreciate you guys coming out and checking out the live stream. And we'll get to the giveaway here shortly. I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, on this one, uh, this is only my second live stream ever, so I'm still kind of trying to work with the equipment, trying to figure it all out and get it right and try to get it as professional as possible. So uh, thank you for bearing with me and uh, we'll get into this. And my, what I was going to say was my first one went really long because I enjoyed it. But this one I want to try to keep a little bit shorter, hopefully less than 30 minutes, and we can go from there and, and see. So basically, let's see how many people we got online. We look looks like we got right now four or three viewers. So we'll give it a little bit longer for people to try to show up. Uh, who knows? Um, hopefully, uh, we get a few more. But if we don't, it doesn't matter. And like I said in the video, the giveaway you don't have to be present on the live stream to win. So I do appreciate you guys still coming out and seeing the live stream, anyways. Um, let's see, taking a look at the delay real quick. Um, that's kind of what I'm trying to check out. It looks like I got about a 15 to 20 second delay. So keep that in mind, folks. All right. So it looks like we had a couple more people show up, looks like maybe. Um, I really hate this delay. It really sucks. So anyways, <clears throat> what to get into? And I told you how my day's going. Um, anyways, first off, I like to kind of kick it off with any type of Q&As. First off, Q&As with the X10R. If anybody has any questions about that, um, try to use this opportunity to try to answer those questions and uh, you know, get a better idea of what it's all about. Um, what I will say is you can now buy this at Pulldog as well as Sieverts and the X10R website. So if you wanna go and purchase one, if you don't win this, um, those are the three websites and, the, and the, all the links are in the description below of this video. And they also uh, should be and will be in the review. I know the Sieverts and the X10R website is. I believe I put the Pulldog one in there as well this morning, but the way this day's been going, uh, you know, I can't really honestly remember if I did or didn't. Anyways, um, looking at the chats, let's see. Oh, 
Okay, um, real quick to answer uh, or to talk about to Ron about just starting out the past year. He said he liked the uh, Purex video. That was actually my very first video really ever other than the intro video that I did for the channel. So I'm a little proud of the video, but I'm also a little disappointed in the video too. But you live and you learn. You, you, you learn from your mistakes, what you can do better. And hopefully with the shaft videos moving forward, um, I have a better game plan of how I want to attack those. And uh, hopefully they, they turn out to be even better quality than the ones I've done in the past. Um, you said you also picked up the uh, 12, you picked up the 12.75. Yep, it, it is the best bang for your buck on that XXT uh, uh, skinny, or uh, Pure X. Let's see. Doesn't look like we have any more um, viewers coming in right now. So we'll just go ahead and get into some of the stuff. Uh, again, I'm gonna kinda delay a little bit here. If you guys have any questions about the X10R, Get them into the chat. I'll try to answer them. Also, if you have any questions about anything else, um, I'll try to answer those as well. So uh, I'll just kind of leave it here and kind of chat it up a little bit longer. Um, also, another question. I know you guys said the volume is good. How about the lighting? Is anything a little too bright? I mean, um, looking at my monitor, it always looks a little brighter than what it actually ends up being on the uh, video itself. So um, any, any type of feedback would be uh, very helpful. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. Uh, that is definitely uh, growing as a creator, Ron. I, I definitely, definitely feel those pains and I take my lumps. Uh, there's the criticisms that go out there in the comments. Mostly I'd say 95 to 98% of them are all positive and I really thank you all for that. Um, but you do get every now and again the, the people that are uh, really critical of what you're doing and everything and it's really hard sometimes to think of what you want to put into a video and what you shouldn't put in a video. So um, I'm still kind of living and learning on that and um, I will have a couple more Shafts videos coming up here in the near future that hopefully are going to be even better than the ones before. So, uh, all right. Yeah, Dave, thanks. You said the lighting looks great. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best to get better audio, better lighting, and that is going to be one of the up, uh, sneak peeks that I'm going to give you guys about the lighting. Um, I got a little special treat that um, I will be doing somewhere down the road, but stay tuned. We'll be talking about that in a minute. Um, so if you guys don't have any other, uh, oh, James said, uh, image looks slightly bur blurry. Um, that could be from the uh, actual upload speeds. Um, right now, my current internet it's rated for 10, but it fluxes anywhere from 5 to 10. And for my streaming software, typically you need to have close to 10, so or at least 10. And um, that's prob that might be part of the problem. Another one too is, is check your settings on your resolution. Um, see if it's set to a, a lower setting instead of automatic or 1080. I am streaming this in 1080p, so if you need to adjust your resolution, that might be the issue as well. Um, anyways, uh, the things I wanted to, uh, or I guess the, since we don't have any Q and A's for the X10R, um, uh, I will open it up to any Q and A's in general for the channel, for products that I've done in the past. Um, I kind of want to hold off on the upcoming products because, uh, that's the sneak peek I'll talk about here in a minute, but I'll give you guys a few minutes to throw something in there to, um, if you have any questions, and then we'll proceed on from there if there's no questions. Uh, C's here. Uh, Ron, you asked me what I'm using for a mic. This is the uh, Go wireless um, transmitter and receiver with the Rode uh, lab mic that goes with it. Um, I don't normally use this particular mic uh, in my setups. I usually use a shotgun mic that's a Rode hybrid. Um, but in this particular scenario, this is a lot better to use a lav mic because I don't have to be right in front of the shotgun mic to talk to y'all. I can move over here and still get a good audio when I'm trying to show things. So um, I don't use the lav mic that often, um, but uh, that's that's part of the uh, progress in the channel itself. So let's see here. Yep, like I said, this body mic. Um, 
So it looks like we're not getting too much else for questions or anything like that. Uh, to let you guys know, uh, to kind of lead into the up and coming stuff that I'm going to be having on the channel, I have a ton of stuff that I, I have that I can review over the next year easily. Uh, the biggest problem is, is uh, getting the time to produce the videos. Filming typically takes uh, you know, a day, sometimes two or, two or three days, depending on how, how things go. Uh, there's a lot of uh, videos, uh, clips that don't ever make it to the uh, video. Um, a lot of the times when you see me talking to the mic or to the camera, I'm uh, probably on the 10th or 12th take before I'm finally satisfied with it. So uh, it, it takes a lot of time to film it. And then the production side of it, um, because I want to put out a high quality and I like doing B-roll and all that stuff to do it a little bit more entertaining, that takes a lot of time too. And unfortunately, between that full-time job, chores around the house, um, taking care of the family, uh, it, it gets kind of daunting. And that's one of the frustrating things I have with the video I'm currently producing. And that video, um, I, I got through three quarters of the filming and I'm doing some of the editing right now. And I realized that something isn't quite right with the testing. And I'm probably going to go back and refilm it just to make sure everything is right. Um, sometimes the testing doesn't turn out quite right. And I don't see it until I actually get it into the editing uh, software to see what it actually looks like. So in that, in this case, that's kind of what happened. So, um, let's see here. Uh, Ron, you say you teach uh, online music lessons. So, yep, yeah. Um, if you have any questions about uh, software or uh, the equipment I use and everything, um, I could do a video on that sometime. Right now, I usually put a list in my descriptions of the video, uh, the equipment that I use. Um, typically on these type of shots, I'm using my Sony 6500 with the Sigma 16 mil prime lens. Uh, it tends to give me the best wide angle look and best uh, quality image. And the audio has been probably the biggest problem for me uh, and lighting a little bit too, but audio, I just can never seem to get it right. And now I'm running a mix pre um, for my inputs for my mics. And in this particular case with streaming it, I have it ran into an A10 switcher. So that's how I, I kind of have it going right now. So. Anyways, um, so I'm not seeing any questions with the uh, equipment and everything that I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the up and coming sneak peek videos. Now, right now, I'm currently producing, let's see, one, I got two videos that I'm currently working on kind of side by side. There will be a third that's going to be right behind that. And I have a fourth that just kind of popped up here recently that I, I want to get it in at least before the fourth video that I'm going to be doing. So to kind of give you a, a sneak peek of what I'm doing, if you're uh, a subscriber to my Instagram, probably back in, I think it was August, I put a post out there of a particular shaft that I was gonna do a review on. And I've been dragging my feet on it. Um, the X10R, I wanted to get that knocked out first. So now I'm working on that particular video. And this is what it is right here. It's another carbon fiber shaft. And I doubt it, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it very well but I'll give it a try, is it's a Go Custom 11.8 carbon fiber shaft. This one's the uh, standard radial. I'm going to show you something else here in a second that goes along with this one. And I put a Zan Hybrid uh, Max tip on this to give it a go. I've never tried one before. And you'll see the, in the review what I think about this tip as well. Um, it has its good points and it has its bad points. And like I said, I'll talk about that in the review once it comes out in a couple of weeks. Now what I was alluding to is here is another Go Custom shaft. Now why I have two is if you notice right here that's my Chris Nitty ring work. What I, when I first talked to Goran that's in Go Customs I was kind of curious if he could do a uh, custom, my, my custom Nitty ring work in one of his shafts and he was like sure so basically i sent him the, the shaft for it and uh <laughs> this is right around covid time frame and the shaft took a long time to get there so the reason why i have the other shaft is we got tired of waiting on my donor shaft to show up so he can get the ring work off of it 
and he just sent me a new one. <laughs> and then lo and behold, two days after I received the one he sent me, he got my donor shaft. So we basically talked about it and I agreed to go ahead and do uh, a second shaft with him. And he gave me a little bit of a deal since all the, the, the problems that we had. Nothing against him, nothing against me. It was 100% the U.S. Post Office. Um, they're probably one of the worst to go through during the pandemic. So um, it took over three months for him to get my shaft. So, And if you don't know, Goran actually lives in Europe, in the Netherlands. So that kind of uh, adds to the, the time uh, it takes to get there. This one right here, though, one other thing I did differently than the regular one is I had him put a Kamui Black Soft on instead, which this is the tip I typically play with the most. So the review that will be coming out next is going to be on both of these shafts. I'll be doing a full review on them that has all the testing and uh, the metrics and everything that I typically have done in that comparison video that I did with the Revo, Synergy, and BQ Prime N, as well as the HXT. So that's going to be the next video that I'll be putting out. So a little sneak peek for you guys. Um, take a look at the comments. Nobody else has any more comments right now. So uh, it looks like we got about 11 viewers now. So that's great. Uh, just to let you guys know, um, the latency on this is about 20 to 30 seconds. So bear with me if I don't see anything right away on the comments, as well as uh, if there's any particular type of issues that are going on. So. I gave you a, uh, a sneak peek of the next video. The video that will be following that one right afterwards is going to be on another shaft. However, it's a little bit of a departure from the, uh, the carbon fiber shafts I've been doing. And if you guys have been out there around, around the Facebook uh, pool, uh, pool and billiards boards out there, you might have heard of this one. And it is this one right here. You notice it's a nice honeywood colored shaft. And this is the Tsunami shaft, and it's a keelwood shaft. A uh, little bit different. I've never had a keelwood shaft before to try, and this one will be the next video after the Go Customs. And actually, this one's going to be a two-part one. The first one, which I'm working on right now, is going to be the unboxing and my initial thoughts on this one. And the second part is going to be all the testing. What I found out with a lot of these videos on the shafts, um, a lot of the issues I've been having is I want to keep them a little shorter than what they've been, but they always end up being 30 minutes to 40 minutes long. And I want to kind of keep it so you don't lose your, your attention uh, with, with the uh, videos and everything. So this is going to be a two-part one. First one's going to be the unboxing and the initial thoughts. The second part will be the... Uh, testing and the final thoughts of overall. That one will be probably the fourth video and there will be the, the, a video in between those two that I'm going to show you uh, that product here in a second. But to finish off with talking about this one here, this is a 12 millimeter tip. I had him, uh, the specs I gave him was 12 millimeters, 30 inch long shaft. Uh, this is the first shaft I ever had at 30 inches. My Prime M is technically a 29 inch, but if you actually measure it out, it's like 29 and a half. So it's almost a 30 inch. And I asked him what, he, what to do about the tip. And I really wanted to try a how tip, which is the tips he likes to put on the, his Tsunami shafts. And I asked him, you know, what, what uh, hardness. And he said, don't go with the, the how soft because they tend to mushroom real easily. And he said the medium howls play a lot like the Kamui Black Softs. So that's what I have on here. And he also does different types of ferrules. And if you see here, if I can get it focused, I got the one that he recommended, which was like a, a white vault plate. So this shaft, um, <laughs> you're gonna have to see the video on it. I, I can't really, I don't wanna tell you what I think about it right now but you definitely want to stay tuned for the two videos that will be on this shaft. So this will be the second and the fourth sneak peek video that I'll be doing. Checking on the uh, uh, people talking here real quick. Um, Charles, thanks for tuning in, Charles. Um, you say your favorite tip is Kamui Tan, or oh, what my favorite tip is, is a Kamui Tan Soft or a Black Soft. I've tried the Brown Soft. I think that's what you mean by the tan. I've tried it on two different shafts, and I'm not a big fan of it. it. It tends to react a little differently than the Black Soft. 
So I still stick to the black soft. Um, if you actually look at the, the information out there on the elasticity and all this other stuff, all the uh, scientific mumbo jumbo on the um, uh, shafts, the durometer readings and all that, the tan soft is a bit different than the black soft. And I just like the black soft a little bit better. Um, I've tried a clear black soft before. Um, which plays very, very similar to a black soft, but it even has a little bit of a difference. So if you were to ask me which one I prefer most, it's the black soft. Um, and you said also, why do I prefer the one over the other? I'm sorry, I missed that part. Um, and just kind of what I said there, the, the way it reacts, I, I tend to get a little bit better action off of a black soft, and it's a little bit more consistent than the uh, browns were. The browns, they just... Uh, every now and again, about every five or six shots, um, the spin I put on the ball, it just didn't react quite the way I expected it to. Um, and that's part of being used to a black soft, um, but uh, I just like the black soft a lot better. It's, um, it's just, uh, to me, a better Kamui tip. Um, what I will say about the Howie, uh, Howie, the How medium tip it does, just like uh, uh, Richard Sue of Tsunami Shafts, uh, Tsunami Qs, RH, RHJ Qs, um, said, uh, it, play, it does play very, very, very similar to a black soft. So how medium is very similar to that. Um, now, I, just to kind of give you a little bit of idea with the uh, Hybrid Max, it is a little bit harder tip than the black softs are, and it's a harder tip than I normally play with. And you'll see in the videos kind of what I think about it, and that kind of comes into play in some in the in the review when I was reviewing the shaft. Um, nothing against Goran; it's purely the tip. Anyways, so that is like I said, going to be the next video, the Go Customs, then followed by the part one of the Tsunami shaft, and then the part two of the Tsunami shaft will be the fourth one. So let's talk about the video that I'll be putting in in between the part one and part two of the Tsunami Shaft. Um, I gotta get my stool out over here so you can see it a little bit better. All right. Oh. Okay. So, does anybody know what this might be? It says Predator right here. I'm going to wait a little bit for the comments to see if anybody pops up and give me a guess on what you think this might be. And just so you know, it looks like we've got, we got 11 people still uh, tuning in. Thank you again for everybody tuning in. Cloth? <laughs> nope, it's not cloth. It's a little heavier than a cloth. A case? Uh, this box is actually a little bit bigger than a case. Uh, Mark, Predator Lights. Bingo. That's it. I decided to invest in the Predator Lights. Um, I was pretty intrigued when they first came out. Uh, and I saw them, and it looked like it can give me some better lighting over my uh, table. And they're built for TV, so the uh, color accuracy is really good. They're, they light up the, the area really well, like you would for studio lighting. And uh, I was curious, so I talked to Ira, who does the Predator lights for Predator, and um, talked to him at length for a while. And basically, uh, one thing that's really, really cool about this that I'm looking forward to doing a lot of videos and a lot of shorter videos too is slow motion. Now, I got some uh, lower quality cameras, cheaper cameras that do slow motion. I'm going to try to get um, a little bit nicer cameras. I can't get the $20,000 uh, super slow motion cameras. Those are just way too expensive. But this, this lighting will give me flicker free good lighting when I'm doing those uh, slow motion, super slow motion shots. So uh, yeah, I believe he said it's rated for, I want to say like uh, 4,000 FPS, which I'll never get anywhere close to that. So these lights are going to be really, really nice. I did get the upgrade with the remote and uh, be able to dim them. And uh, I believe I can also change the coloring 
from a, uh, a yellower light to a bluer light and things like that. So um, really looking forward to this. Now this video that I'll be doing on this um, is probably going to be more or less uh, like a time-lapse install. Um, and I might get some thoughts on it afterwards, but I'm going to give a lot of views of the lighting quality before and after. So that's what the video this is gonna, gonna have. And the reason why I wanna put it in between the Tsunami first part and the second part is I wanna give the second part of the video this lighting. So that's the reason why I'm gonna do it that way. Uh, the, and the reason why I'm not gonna throw it in for the first part is because I'm already working on it and I already have the current lighting that I have and it's just gonna look really bad between the two different light settings. So that's the plan for this one. Um, take a look at the comments to see what we got here. Uh, let's see. Dave, you're looking forward to the lighting video? I am too. Um, I want to talk about something else about this too when I talk to Ira that um, I'm really hoping I get picked for his beta testing, but I'll tell you about that in a second. Hang on. Um, uh, Charles, you're saying you have a Nikon DSLR camera package for sale if I'm interested. Right now, um, camera-wise, uh, I'm, I'm just... Look, right now, I, I'm, I'm not going to buy any uh, camera gear for the foreseeable future. Um, however, the next camera I'll probably end up buying is going to be something that can do better than at least 900 for, 940 frames per second or, or is it 9, 960 frames per second uh, or better. Because um, right now, I have a Sony RX100 that will get up to that level, but the quality really gets bad when you get into the 960 range. So um, eventually we'll get some really good slow-mo stuff. And I want, what I want to do is I want to revisit some of the shafts that I had, get some close-up hits, get some uh, slow motion shots and, and just get some really cool footage out there. And something that might be only like, you know, two or three minutes long, N not much talking about it, just a shot just to show off the low deflection of a shaft or a particular shot in particular. So, um, no other comments right now. Uh, the one thing I wanted to uh, mention before I put this down is what I'm hoping to get picked for. Uh, I talked to Ira at length when I ordered this and he was telling me he's going through some beta testing of a, a system, a camera system, mounting system for this lighting uh, setup. And uh, basically it can give you really uh, different angles to the, to the table all from being attached to the lights up top. So I'm really looking forward and hoping I can, I can do some beta testing for them. And uh, my, my room is not that big. Uh, the, the table is a seven foot table. And if I have perpendicular on the rail shots on the long rails, um, I usually have to use a smaller uh, cue or I have to jack up about six inches. So uh, that, that's, that's pretty nice. I'm hoping I can get in there and get a, a good angles with uh, some of the rigging that he's going to have. And I'm really looking forward to being picked for beta testing if he does it. One thing, whether I get beta tested or not, is I'm going to figure out a way to put a camera in between the rectangle area so I can get a nice, good top view of the table. Right now, I kind of uh, put a vise on the, on the light and I hang a GoPro from it. Um, doesn't really get the greatest uh, angle, and uh, if I'm doing a live uh, shoot, the I can't use the fisheye very well because the, the fisheye gives me the better overall view. However, that curvature just really distorts the look of the table. Um, when I'm doing uh, editing in, in post, I can take GoPro fisheye footage and flatten it out, but I can't do it when I'm live streaming or anything like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. So like I said, this video is gonna be a, more or less like a time lapse and then a, like a before and after lighting. I don't really wanna to go too in depth with it. So anyways, I'm really looking forward to this. And like I said, this is a big investment. I'm, uh, I'm hoping I can uh, really uh, up my game on the channel with this light and getting more slow-mo footage. Okay, so let's see here. Do we have any more comments? Nope, it doesn't look like we have any more comments. So, um, in, in the efforts of keeping this shorter, like I was telling y'all, it looks like uh, we're a little over 30 minutes right now. 
So perfect timing. Um, I, I wanted to keep it within about 30 minutes. We're going to go a little over. <laughs> That's pretty much what I do with every video. I want to keep it short, but we go over and I tend to talk a lot. So I apologize. So without any further ado, let's get into the winner. This is the X10R that Terry um, and X10R sent us to do a giveaway for you guys. Um, I want to thank you guys uh, uh, right away that originally we we're going to do 1900, but in the middle of doing the video editing, like I said in the video, we went over 1900. So I didn't want to wait too long. I kind of wanted to do 2000, but I knew 2000 might take over a month because really the subscribers coming in, it goes in spurts. I, some days I'll get like five or six in one day, and then I might go a week without getting a single one. So I didn't want to wait a hundred more subscribers and, uh, I wanted to get this out to you guys. So we did the 1950 and, and thankfully we're at 1963 right now. So I, I definitely, again, thank you all for the support and everything. And I want to thank Terry and um, his partner at, uh, for getting this to us and giving a giveaway for you all. Um, like I said, if you guys don't win this one, you can get it at Seabirds. You can get it at Pool Dog now. And you can also get it on their X10R website. And all those links are in the description below of this video, as well as the review video. And if you haven't seen the review video and you're just tuning in for the live stream, see what this thing's all about. This is a very, very, very nice universal queue extension that works for multiple queues. It's not going to damage your queue. And it's super simple. So this one right here, to kind of give you an idea, I haven't really taken it out of its packaging, but this is going to be the bone color and the black collar and it has all the the uh, gear that that came with the one i did in the review so let's see who the winner is all right it looks like the winner is gregory Cas I hope, I hope I'm not going to butcher but your name, Gregory. Kasachi, C-A-C-A-C-E, Kasachi. So, Gregory, thank you for the comment. I really appreciate uh, you being a subscriber and commenting on the video and entering this, this giveaway. And uh, this Extendar, uh, extender is now yours. So what I want you to do is hit me up in an email with your address and everything and I'll get this sent to you. If you're not on this live stream, I will be putting a comment on your uh, comment within the Extend R review. So go ahead and post in there. Uh, or I'll post in there about you being the winner. And I would like you to email me instead of putting your address out in the comment section. So my address or my email address is on the YouTube page for Pool Addiction, but it's also pulladdiction13 at gmail.com. So hit me up, give me your address, and I'll get this thing out to you as soon as possible. Once again, X10R, Terry, and uh, forgive me, I think it's Mike. Uh, I se severely apologize uh, if that's, that's not your name. I can't, uh, I'm really bad with that. Uh, but X10R, thank you for the, for the giveaway for the subscribers on this channel. And you make a great pot product, um, and I wish nothing but the best for you guys in the future. I'm going to look at one more time at the comment section, and if I don't have any more comments to answer or talk about, uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of wrap this uh, live stream up. So, Ron, I got your congrats for Gregory. So, Gregory, uh, Ron says congratulations. And... Well, it doesn't look like we're going to get any more, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and hope you are uh, anticipating the upcoming videos as much as I'm anticipating on getting them done. And like I said, the Go Custom one will probably be coming out in a couple of weeks, and uh, shortly followed by the Part 1 of the Tsunami Chef. So stay tuned, and thank you, everyone, once again.